precious name we have prayed. I know some of you might be wondering, why do we pray this much? It is because one of the agencies of cooperating with divine counsel or divine agenda is prayer. In prayer, we activate certain operations in Zion. Alignments. Alignments. Construction works. These things come into place when man lines up. That's why I sang that song. My heart sings. It's a cry from my heart. Lord, do something. Move something. There are shifts when men pray. And because we understand that spiritual reality is actually happening distances. To this end, we labor that men can cover distance. And come to the place where these realities become commonplace. My whole journey yesterday was about 15 hours. And when I got to Kaaba, the Lord began to speak to me about miracles. He said, son, miracles are the effects of movements in the spirit because men decided to come into the realm where those experiences are normal. They could actually be an everyday thing. If you dwell in the realm of the spirit, in that realm, all things are possible. You won't need to force miracles. You won't need to pray for them. But because men prefer to stay in a flesh realm and when they cite the limitations of their flesh they begin to make a demand on the supernatural to be unlocked so what we receive as miracles are just results of forays that men make journeys that men make into the spirit and they encounter certain things the realities they encounter and they come back with it was we call miracles if a man would decide to live his life perpetually in that realm what is called a miracle will be natural to that man. To that end, we pray that we will journey and walk out of the realms where we are limited so that we can get into the place where we are not limited. When I spoke, of, please sit down. I'm already on. When I spoke about God bless you, when I spoke about the life of God finding expression, one of the things I am coming to terms with in this season is that we, though we have embodied the life of God, 98% of believers, some people don't like the name Christian anymore. I still use it, so I'll give us all the names. Some people use believers, some people use Christians, some people call them saints. And if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, it means A is equal to C. So all of them are equal. But 98% of believers have never for once seen the life of God expressed in them. They have embodied the life, but they still dwell in a realm of normalcy. And until, until that fullness comes, where men have it thrown into their physical mind and their spiritual world that they are not normal. I will not stop. That the believer is not programmed in God. I feel the sound is off somehow. So let's not wait until I play the recording to know that it's bad. Just touch it a little. Thank you. We are not normal. We are not the masses. We are not humans. The Oxford, is the advanced learner's dictionary now, may not have a name for us. But you see, in that realm, naming is not as important as the functions you perform. 
God's servant was speaking to us in one of the sermons about an incident that happened in Abuja. I think I've shared it sometimes. How the younger brother of a certain minister died. I'm sure the volume of this thing is going to be affected in the recording. I'm sure. How the younger brother of a minister died. And because this minister had spoken so much about life and life and life and life. He felt that it was not normal for his younger brother to die. So he called fellow ministers and they began to labor. All night into the morning. This man didn't even twitch on his bed. He was dead dead. But while the laboring was going on, a son of God was coming into Abuja and flew in by air. He didn't get to the airport before the Lord gave him an instruction in mid-air. When you get to Abuja, you go to this so-so-so place and go and wake that guy up. You know, Apostle Solomon was saying that the kind of tongues you heard in that room, you won't want to pray in tongues again. It was heavy tongues. Because you see, raising someone from the dead is a very heavy spiritual oppression. It's not energy. It's, it's capacity, authority that you need to be able to reach into the world of the dead and ask that gates be opened, that that life comes back to enter this person. Understand that when a man is raised from the dead, it's human life that entered him back. It's, it's not, you didn't conjoy a spirit. It's his real life. If he was AA before he died, he won't come as SS. His, his quality of intelligence is the same. That's what it means that he resurrected. If he used to hate people before, he will still hate them now. So he said, the tongues was going on. This young man landed at the airport and merely got to the gate of the hospital. The guy rose up. He didn't pray. That he was coming, death had to tell them, open the gates. Let his life go back. He said, by the time he approached the room where the man was, he was already up. But the sickness that killed him was still on his body. So he looked intently at the man's eyes. And by the look, that which was on his body gave way. That's the expression of his life. Of the life of God. Redemption does not give you an energized life. It gives you an exchange life. It's not like Brother Emmanuel's life used to operate at 8 over 20. And then Jesus comes into your life and then you go from 8 over 20 to 16 over 20. That looks good. It sounds like good news. But it's the counsel of darkness. He gave you his life. So our labor is to the end that that life is expressed because every man must let that light shine. I'm using life and light interchangeably because that's what the Bible says in, in John chapter 1 verse 4. In him was life. But when that life was communicated into men, it became the light of men. It is that light that now shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. So that which darkness cannot comprehend is not revelation. Talk is cheap. It's not revelation. It's the force of his life which entered into the human spirit and then crystallized as light. It's not faith declaration. It's not the abundance of scripture. You may know one verse because you have not been exposed to the word. But if you have the life, your results will be more than men who have read the Bible cover to cover. We have men who are too, inform they are too informed to be useful to God. That's the evil on social media now. They are too informed to be, to be useful. We keep having conferences and conferences and conferences and our nation is being ravaged by darkness. I was showing the house today. Reverend Kenyon was giving us a lowdown of the meeting in Uganda. How many of us heard about it? That discourse with the atheists. He said, 
he had studied so much in Nigeria. Immediately he got to Uganda, he saw videos everywhere of that that eighties. The professor there. They showed him in his study. He saw a lot of books, and he said, "Well, um, we're waiting for. I'm inviting all of you, my friends, to come to the debate. I'm going to have a debate with a Nigerian apologist." Reverend Gideon said immediately he saw the the books. This also, he said, my heart went like this. He said, he now called his covenant brother, Apostle Romeo, and said, you like say, this guy, they're very prepared. Though. So he said, but, you know, he still felt, uh -uh. you know, it was not his meeting. It was supposed to be that guy against Ravi Zacharias. If you saw the thing, it was Ravi Zacharias. So it was Ravi that said, uh, Gideon, you go. Ravi Zacharias is number one apologist globally. He said until he got to his hotel room and one strange fever came. His body system crashed. He now called the apostle and said, this thing is not knowledge. There's a power dimension to it. So they began days upon days prayer chain in their place in Jaws, I, know, I think I sent a couple of messages here too because he sent me and then we began to pray. In RCN Makoti, it was prayer chain upon prayer chain, 24 hours. He said the day before the meeting, the guy came on national TV and said, um, Nigeria always beats uh, Uganda in football, but tomorrow I'm about to trash a Nigerian. He said he called a person and said, this guy, I'm afraid. Hey, but if you are watching the video, you see that the man couldn't say anything. He was just drunk. Now, was telling us that recently saw another video on YouTube where that man openly came to admit that he lost the debate. It's not words. The life is not words. It's not words. It's the power of God. Even when you speak, if that which you communicate is loaded with the power of God, you will turn the tables instantly. That gospel that is being preached on social media is not the fault of those who are preaching it. It's our fault. I read. Someone comes in strangeness. How do we respond to them? This boy, you will go to hell. Abby. That's what we say. You know what I've been telling you? Give your life to Christ. Someone comes with a discourse, an intelligent discourse, having like 30 verses. You don't see what they do. They don't just quote from the head. They lift the verses and put it there. They can give you 30 verses of scripture to support one thing, even though it's error. And then you come and say, you know, I've been warning you, this stupid boy, this. We are not even informed to match. We are not informed. We don't know what the truth is. That's why every day people are drifting, are drifting into error. We need to study. But when we study, I don't mean just study scriptures. You need to study the life. I was still answering questions this morning. And what I brought to end that discussion was a template. I said, I have looked intently upon the template. Jesus. That's the template. And one, two, three, four, five verses support my discourse as regards this template. Whatever life you have, the things you share cannot be found in this template. If you can find them, I will wake up, I will come to church this evening and preach the things that you said. That's, 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 that's good. That's good. My response was one line. I love this, sir. An end of discussion. Just leave it there. On your street, that life flow must come. Because one of the weapons of our warfare is the courage of his life. It's the courage of his life. When that life has crystallized in the believer, it becomes light. You cannot pray away darkness. It, is, it was prophesied. 
For darkness shall cover the earth. I'm quoting from Isaiah chapter 60. And gross darkness, all the people, the only people who can penetrate and have influence when that darkness comes are those in whom his life has crystallized to become light. There is no other way. We can't fast away the darkness. It is darkness in season. And we can learn from nature, no matter how dark the night is, that darkness holds because it is its, its assigned season. The only thing that makes you survive in darkness is the presence of light, and it's not revelation. It is that which a man has embodied and carried to full time in his spirit, the life of Christ. As it begins to get released in your office, get released in your classroom, get released in the family, get, it must be an intentional thing. It's like a torchlight on a dark night. You must press the switch. Many of us don't even know where the switches are. What I'm doing is releasing another weapon over you. That weapon is called the burdens of the spirit. It's a weapon. It keeps men on their knees. It sustains assault against the enemy. Burdens. God wants to do 10 things in your home. And he doesn't know how to communicate because you are so busy. So he loads your spirit with one thing. He's doing 10 things. But as long as you stay in the place of laboring for that one thing, you are supplying the partnership for God to begin to work. What you are calling a problem now may actually not be a problem. It's just a setup. God wants to do so much, but he wants to keep you on your knees. And he knows if he does this one thing, you will run away. So he waits for what is important to you. And then he gives you a, some bit of spiritual intelligence to say, I'm interested in doing this thing. Once we know that God is interested, what many men begin to do is begin to labor in that area. But God leaves that thing undone. Not because he's wicked. Because he needs that supply of labor so that other things can be done. That's why that's what he does. God, you will not answer me. Keep praying. God, but is this thing I was asking for? I, I don't know if it happens to you. Is this one I'm praying for? And is that other one you are doing? Yes, is the labor for this one that is birthing solutions there. God, the enemy is attacking my health. But my brother just got a, just gained admission. Do my own too. Mm -mm. Oh, this is your health issue. Uh, we be sustained till God sorts every other person, and then he comes to you because God needs a voice in that home. The force of light. Let me go quickly into the weapons of our warfare. What I want to do in this second part, I know I can't finish, is to bring to us. 15 basic weapons of warfare. 15 basic weapons of warfare. I'll try and teach as the Lord helps me. Last week I began by saying to us that the, the warrior who has found a cause for existence that is more than himself needs to have at least five kinds of knowledge so that he can engage accurately for warfare. One is that he must have the knowledge of the victory that Jesus procured on the cross. I like the song that the fairy worshippers took tonight. He must have the knowledge of that victory and also understand that every battle that is won is his victory. We are not called to fight personal battles because beyond that which you call a problem is an eternal agenda and that's all that God seeks to do praise the Lord the knowledge one of the victory on the cross I said secondly that you require the knowledge of your realm of engagement if you fight from the earth you are already programmed for losses nothing wins on the earth realm 
in that I also established that by creation, man's realm of existence was never the earth. He was created from the earth, but he was dropped into an eternal plane, a spiritual dimension. And when he fell, God sent him out of that realm, Eden, and then took Eden out of, seemingly withdrew Eden. That's how man became an inhabitant of the earth. So the winning man must know how to ascend back to his original realm of oppression. I said to us that we need to have the knowledge of the weapons that are available to us. And that's what I'm opening tonight. That in that faculty of, um, I call it the faculty of taking territories. Because that's what the battle is about. It is that um, the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. And the kingdom is so divided. It's, 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 in, it's, it's segmented. There is a kingdom expression that is for your family. There is a kingdom expression in your finance. There is a kingdom expression in your relationships. There is a kingdom expression in your career. There is a kingdom expression um, for those why ministry is segmented. The kingdom must find expression in all those realms. That's the end of your warfare. The end of your warfare is that Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 can become a reality. That the dominion mandate finds expression. That the witches stop flying and they lose their craft. It's not so that we can come and boast that we have downed a few witches. It is that in that airspace, that which is God alone is what takes place. That's why we're fighting. That the spirit of the bond woman comes under attack. It's not so that we can say we have converted everybody. It's so that people who God has created in his image, who God had a mind to cause to exist in his image and his likeness, can come to the true light of their creation and they can begin to fulfill their God purpose. Is his victory. But in that faculty of taking territories, there are three departments where you can draw from in warfare. One of those departments is the department of the weapons of our warfare. That's what we're studying now. So you can draw from those weapons. Second Corinthians chapter 10. If you take it from verse 3, you can pick that. You can also draw into warfare, draw tools to engage in warfare from department 2 which is called the department of the armor of God. As Ephesians chapter 6. Jesus speaking to the disciples in Matthew. I can't remember the, the accurate thing now. It's 1918 or so. I think it should be 1918. He speaks of department 3, which is the department of the keys of the kingdom. You can use kingdom keys in warfare too. When they began to ask about who he was, and then Peter, by tapping into divine intelligence, came back with the counsel. He said, Thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. It means the church will, my church, the one that I build, will constantly have attacks from the gates of hell. But they will not be able to overcome it or overrule it. So he said in the following verse, says, So I give to you the keys of the kingdom. That which you bound is bound. That which you lose is loosed. So when it comes to binding and losing, uh, we don't deploy the weapons of our warfare. We don't deploy our armor. We deploy keys. Keys are symbolic of different dimensions of authority. So warfare is intricate. That's why people lose. I shared with you last week that in, on, against one demon possessed person, I deployed the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. The mystery of the anointing oil, the mystery of the mantle, and everything bounced. Not that instantly oh, use this one. You know, that's what they do, Yoruba film. The Abala will cast something. 
or run some incantations and the guy say ah you won comes back with his own and runs something at him again and while that one is trying to run he says it's the dark dark check what is that baby when this thing and this thing were coming and they plot this thing on the road this was what you don't want those films so what they are beginning to trade what they are trading basically is no weapons they are throwing is platforms in the spirit they are throwing come on let me tell you, i need to concentrate when i'm like this i'm pretty sensitive don't put anything in there please I was speaking about keys and I said they are basically um, levels of authority or access in the spirit that dimension can also be traded so when it comes to binding and losing that's basically what goes forth all right before they cancel that flow of thought let's go into something deeper so that's um, the knowledge three knowledge four is the knowledge of his armor of engagement and the knowledge five is that you cannot win if you have not mastered the devices of the enemy. That's why I watch those films. Because if they will, if the powers of darkness had known, they will not act some of those films. Those films give us eye openers into their operations. Too easy. Just sit down and watch one Igbo film. One when we're small, we used to watch Ab- Abijah. I don't know if you saw him. And from the Abija film, we know how incantations happen. I spoke to us last week. I said, you are going on the road and a man who exists in a spiritual plane releases a curse word. And then you look at him and say, God forbid. It doesn't happen now, but the thing goes to wait for you at the next junction. And then he said, but I said, God forbid. It's simple because you used an utterance on the earth realm. You tried to use an utterance on the earth realm to stop one that was from a spirit realm. It doesn't work. And then we see sometimes that the herbalist wants to solve a case and the witches appear. With that, we can learn their hierarchy. Say, so this thing you want to, if you do it, you self will die. Say, me. I will do it. If you do it, so it means in that kingdom they really break ranks it's it's clean warfare everybody but in our kingdom we don't know we lack the basic discernment to know who is higher than you or who is lower than you but the bible says about that army that god is raising in john chapter 2 it says they don't break ranks it's not because someone comes and says, me, I'm prophet. Or me, I'm senior prophet. You are a junior one. Their discernments are sharp. They can measure the levels of graces on people's lives. And that's where honor comes from. So we must understand. The Bible says, for we are not ignorant of the devil's devices, lest he take advantage of us. The enemy, if you know all of God and you know nothing about the operations of the enemy, you are already at the word go for the battle at a disadvantage. Many times we go into warfare and we win one battle. Not knowing that it's not battle fair. What do you call it? Warfare. A war is a conglomeration of battles. Plenty of them. So the fact that you won one battle here does not mean that your warfare is accomplished. But when you win one, what do you normally do? You rejoice. You begin to dance. The prayer and fasting ceases. Not knowing that the adversary always goes to regroup. Because even when the Lord met him and after he threw those three temptations, the Bible says, and he left him for a season. 
Some translations say for a while. So we know that there's always going to be a rematch. That's how the enemy works. Those are his schemes. That's his mode of operation. But we go and start dancing. And we quickly go and share the testimony. May God open your eyes to see the kinds of people who come into what we call church. You know that even testimonies are not shared by impulse. When you gave your life to Christ, you lost your mind. You can't preach because you think this is what to preach. You can't even share testimony because you think you are doing testimony. I don't want to share this thing before, but I just said it. Let me go and share. You can't decide to share. You lost your mind. I just feel that if I don't share, where did that feeling come from? Now you flow by instructions. That's what an arm, that's what differentiates an army. And so the women said they didn't know before because when you won, God blinded them. Now, without their spiritual radars, they can't see you. So they say, Ah, oh man, Neoma yet he was school. He will not graduate. So you prematurely end your season of rest and then you come into battle. Season. Now, I'm not teaching us to be afraid. Our, what, our weapons are too potent. But even in the weapons, the weapons are only deployed by command. If a police officer goes on roadblock, even though it's illegal, but they still go. If, they, if you travel to that Makodi side, you almost get sick. Not of bad roads, but of roadblocks. It's almost at some places every three kilometers. Sometimes you are seeing the last guys who the driver assaulted. Why you are still with these ones? Those ones who are there. And you are wondering what? That's why the journey became 15 hours. Because they keep stopping you. And you sort them and if you say you don't have anything, they'll park your car. If that guy gets back to his office, they will count the bullets in his gun. You know they do that. If one is missing, he must account for it. He can't sell it. He can't. If he misfires it, he's in trouble. They will court martial him. It's the same with this end time army. I deploy the blood not because my mind tells me the blood of Jesus. It's because that's what the command center is supplying. So your 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 versatility in warfare. Is because you have the air that can pick signals accurately. So I said 15 basic weapons by which to propagate. I'll do just seven today so that I can do justice to them. So for those who are writing, for those who are writing, The first weapon I want us to go through quickly tonight is the weapon of love. Love. Oh, someone felt it was blood of Jesus. I will start it. Let's start with the virtues. It's the weapon of love. Now, I'm not teaching tonight love your enemies. There's a dimension of that. But it is a basic weapon. It may not be much of... um, when it comes to interaction with humans, it becomes a weapon of offense. Maybe I should lay this foundation first. When we speak of weapons in warfare, they are two dimensional. There are platforms, weapons that serve only as launching platforms. You need those foundations to be laid or else you are in space. There are also others that you can deploy. Most of them are dual and we need to understand how to operate them in duality. Don't worry, I'll explain. When we speak of love, Jesus said, I've said to you, love your neighbors. Pray for those who despitefully use you. That's how you relate with men. 
Because the guy who troubles you in the department or who troubles your neighbor who troubles you is not your troubler. He just yielded himself as an agent to a realm. And because that realm that he connected to needs a license to operate on the earth, they begin to use his license because he's a man from the earth. So he gives them a legal right of operation. He's just giving an expression. If you can correctly address his connection with that realm and disconnect it, you'll be nice the following morning. So when you relate with them, you need love. That's what you deploy. The Bible says love conquers all. But that's not what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about a foundation in warfare, which is the knowledge of the love of the Father. Every warrior must know that his kingdom, or the kingdom that he represents, loves him. Briefly in the workers' meeting, I was sharing of my experience with Apostle. When he said, come, I knew the doors were going to open. When he said travel, I knew I was going to reach home. I was telling someone there this morning that me and Apostle chatted quite well into this morning. He said, really? I said, yes. He said, how? He, has, he had a meeting. I said, yes. It's his son. So I was sharing on social media yesterday. I said, this, I have a father who loves me and he believes in me. We are just talking and I'm just standing. That's my son. That's Pastor Tolu from Bumoshan. That's my son. That's Pastor Tolu from Bumoshan. I'm busy. Talk to him. Talk to him. When you tell him, he will tell me. It gives you confidence. That was how Jesus operated on the earth. He may not be confident of the love of those who are around. But his security was founded, anchored upon the knowledge that he's loved by the Father. So, like I said during the workers' meeting, even if my abilities are not comp even if I am not totally furnished for warfare, I know that well, even when I don't know how to deploy the weapons, I came to fight because I know I have. You know, there's this song we used to sing. No song, I don't know where the songs went, but they have a lot of meaning. Uh, when we were in secondary school, our praise and worship was like, I have a very big God who is always by my side. A very big God by my side, by my side. I don't know if you know, but you need to know and be sure that the size of the God that you have is massive. And that that God has sworn that he loves you. The strength of the nation of Israel is not just intelligence. It's spiritual. I was sharing with us a thing last day about an event that happened in 2016. I was reading online. That a rocket was fired into Israel by one of those Arab nations. It was a rocket that was potent enough to sink Israel. Those missiles that will land open the ground and then sink everything on it and cover it up. As the rocket, it was it's on Google, entered the airspace of Israel. Google said a wind rose in Israel. The wind was strong enough to take the missile and redirect it into the sea. It's not in Bible times. It's 2015. So they said they, they, they went for a meeting and someone was chatting with their minister for defense and said, what kind of missile defense system was that? And his answer was simple. He said, the God of Abraham. Is security. I may not be strong enough sometimes for the kind of warfare that comes against me. Because like I said to us last week, the Bible says, though we walk, walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. And I said to us that in the flesh, a heavyweight boxer fights a heavyweight. 
in the spirit the battles are not chosen in fairness the enemy might pitch a stronger sized enemy against you ask David when you see him but David's confidence was in a God that he had known in the backside of the desert so as young as you are God may be pulling you out and saying stand on behalf of this family and you are saying to God I am but a child the consciousness of the love of the father is a platform for victory the first weapon I bring tonight whatever it is that will make that reality come to life you must engage it it may be a verse of scripture that you begin to meditate upon till it crystallizes in your spirit you are not alone Jesus said at a point he said I'm not alone my father who sent him is with me and it's my confidence it's my confidence when the warfare you know i don't know i have one very carefree attitude when it comes to warfare if i was sent and it's one of the potent weapons i'll be talking about is the mystery of being sent don't rush out into a battle wait till he commissions you you can dare the devil himself if god sent you You can dare the devil himself. When God sends a man into a territory, everything in that territory spiritually, as long as that man remains connected to his command center, is subject to him. In that realm, he says to one, come and he comes. In that realm, he says to one, go and he goes. It's not noise. It's a consciousness. The kingdom of darkness recognizes sent men when they enter territories. And they bow. Someone threatened me last year. It's a big threat. And then he made an error. He threatened me with a herbalist that I have known spiritually. I know his name in this city. So I said to him, You don't know that man. He said, I know my mom will take me to him. I said, Tell the man, tell your mom. If any one of you closes your eyes tonight, you will not wake up tomorrow. And I went away. They went. And at nine o'clock, my phone rang. Sir, can I see you tonight? I said, no. I promised him I was not going to call on God over that issue. I will enter my house and pray sparingly and go to eat and sleep. But if you doze before tomorrow morning, any of the three of you, there will be three dead, there will be dead men before tomorrow. I didn't come to this town to play. He sent me. And the one who sent me is with me. I saw him 7.30 a.m. the following morning with swollen eyes. Guy, what's up now? You didn't sleep? He said, we're begging yesterday. I said, now I did take the times. The Abalis told them, said, that guy's size is small, but his backup is big. Go and beg him. The Bible says, the father loved the son. And as an expression of his love, he has given all judgment to him. That's one of the powers of being conscious of God's love. It, come, it, it delivers into your hand a judgmental dimension. Even in silence, things are... You know what? You know, Reverend Gideon was explaining judgment to us. And when the Bible said... Was it Reverend Gideon, evangelist... Um, sorry, prophet, um, Ezekiel... He said, when the Bible says, Savior shall come forth out of Zion, she judge the mountains of Esau. He said, the judgment is not that they'll come to a courtroom. It's like you are marking script. So every time they bring their report, that's what your marker does. Say, this one right, this one wrong, this one right, this one wrong, this one right, this one wrong. And then it's caused them. It's the ability that God gives to those saviors. But it's the same ability that Jesus has. Oh, the council of darkness is there. I don't need to go and pray. 
based on the marking scheme. This is wrong. And that, that altar just shut down. The love of the Father. My second weapon is it's a very much known one. It's the weapon of faith. It's the weapon of faith. In warfare, faith is not only a cover, it is a ground holder. Let me announce this to you. There are few wars that you will fight or battles that you will fight, especially spiritual ones, in which you will get instant results. There are very few. And when it comes to territories, when I speak of territories, I speak of families, I speak of departments, I speak of cities, you will really get instant results fighting for any city. Because that which sustains your presence of the enemy in any organized system is legal. So you will need God to begin to undo the legalities after each other. The battles are really won instantly. For that, for those battles, you need faith as a hold, a ground holder. The Bible says, having done all, prayed, fasted, sang, danced. What else do we do to fight? Cry. Some people's tears is part of warfare. What else, Mr. Sunshine? What else can you do? Roll on the ground. Hit your head on the wall. Call your uncles and aunties. After you have done all, stand. There is a waiting dimension of faith that our generation needs to know. That God gave me a promise. And because the nature of he that gave the promise is that, is that he cannot lie. Until my answer comes, I will wait. I have seen that the vision, but the vision that I saw is for an appointed time. The Bible says, do it, tarry, wait, it will not even tarry. And that, is that not complex? Do it. Tarry. If it stays long, wait. Because it will not take long. It is because there is a time suspension dimension that faith gives. I'm going to explain. Do it. Tarry. Even if it takes, let's say tarry is five years. Do it takes five years. Wait, because it will not take five years. What does that tell you? The contemporary Christian says what it means is it was programmed for five years. So because I am waiting, it will happen now. No, it will still take five years. But faith suspends time. You are, the reason why you know the day is going is because you have a time piece. You wake up in the morning and you are just doing your stuff in the house. And then you look at your watch. What do you say? In your body, say, ah, law. How, you, how was it that you didn't know that Ojoti law? Because you did not relate with the with that object that calibrates that dimension called time. Faith has the ability to give grounds to men in the realm of the spirit. So it's not done here yet, but I'm not crying for it anymore. So I will fellowship in the realm where it has been done while I am waiting for its manifestation in the visible realm. Though it tarry, I know it has a time frame, but I can leave time and come into eternity. So they are saying, you don't have a baby yet. Everybody is crying. I'm not going to cry. My baby is coming. As a matter of fact, I've seen my baby. It's a boy or a twin I'm going to give back to. But there's no pregnancy there yet. I have seen. Elijah said, I heard the sound of abundance of rain. The servant came six times. I said, but I'm not seeing anything. Ah, Elijah said, your eyes is dim. Go and check again. I have seen. And then the last time he came and said, I can see. Later come, you just saw. Okay, now go and tell Ahab who also lives in your realm 
where realities cannot be grasped apart from that which is visible to the physical eye and go and tell him that rain if you read your bible the bible says in the meantime it was the cloud the skies grew dark instantly so it was not clouds coming gradually he saw the cloud the size of a hand go and tell Ahab and in the meantime instantly it was all dark where did the clouds come from they had existed in a realm they just needed a voice on the earth and then he came so faith becomes a ground holder Lord nobody in this home must be sick nobody in this area must be sick there's a plague of sickness and then another man gets sick you are not going to say Lord but we said they should not be sick he said no we have agreed in heaven's courtroom and I have a verdict that nobody will be sick on this street they say it's a sick person but that verdict holds Eleoniku I had the privilege of going to Lorry on Wednesday with my dad. He came to town, so he drove me down to Lorry on my way. He said, son, a few weeks ago, I still felt strange symptoms in my body. And I've seen my friends that when they went to conduct exams for doctors in Lagos, someone raised an issue that, ah, about you are, it's a miracle that you are still on your feet, oh these health conditions are beginning to show up at your age and he said I have constantly said to them and said to God the day I was almost dying you told your servant that's me his son you told your servant that you have spared me and Lord you will spare me and by the following morning symptoms so the battle on his health is sustained not by John 3 16 but from a verdict from the throne room. I've shared that story with us. It was our first day here. Come home, come home. Your father is dying. And I ran into my room and I knelt and said, God, what is the verdict? And he said, I have spared him. So I called. I said, I'll come weekend. God said he has spared him. And his health began to go up. Faith. is a ground holder. But faith in warfare is also a cover. If you don't watch those old films, it's only gone film you used to watch, you won't understand. In a city like this, based on the counsels of God that have come to us, we need men who have the shield. If you've watched an ancient film before, you, you know that once the enemies come, the first area of warfare is remote. The arrow men. Abi, before the ground men move. What do you see an organized army do? They link up shield for shield. They have one in front, a line, and then they have a cover. So all you see is just metals. Any guy whose faith is not in alignment, whose shield is not in alignment, is the one that the arrow will meet. You just see the arrow come through one hole and then but in an organized war, they lock their shields. So Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 talks about all of us coming into what? The unity of faith. Where our convictions are matched. The Bible says until we all come. It means a process. It's a process. That two of us are, are in warfare, and I'm saying they cannot do anything, and you are saying, Ah, oh my power, leave them alone. There must be matching faith. It's so easy when you are preaching, when you are a word of faith preacher, to go to extremes because the faith realm is a massive realm, it's a massive realm. If a man ever comes into alignment with God, he's, he's seemingly unlimited. His only limit is God himself. That's why it's easy to deify a man of faith, make a God out of him. And 
Then we have teachings like people operating in the class of God. And there's nobody in God's class. We saw that in the life of Jesus. Who, did Jesus have age mates? Prophecy ensured that he did have one. All his age mates in Bethlehem were wasted. Moses had age mates. Killed everybody's age. He was the only survivor. And nobody will say I'm your mate. Eh uh-uh. God does nobody operates in God's class. Even Jesus, the God man, to operate on the earth, he had to step out of his God class. Though he was in a form of God, he had to take upon another nature to walk the earth. Ah, if Jesus had come down to walk the earth himself, Mary's womb would have exploded. His eyes is like what? And that eye grew inside his stomach for nine months. And there are no two holes in the stomach. Uh -uh. His feet are like brass. So you think so? so Imagine that was brass that was kicking Mary's stomach. But he had to repackage himself. Faith, a ground holder. And a shield. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. I know we love this. Our third weapon here is the name of Jesus. I'm not going to say too much on that because I've already we already have a sermon this year titled "In His Name." But the name of Jesus is a a signet of offense. A signet is a ring that carries a seal. It has a dual deployment dimension too. You can come against the enemy at the mention of that name, Jesus, and then things shift. But beyond it being a signet of offense, it is also a vehicle of offense. I, I wrote down here, I said, it's more like an armored personnel carrier. Every armor, the armored personnel carrier is a full metal vehicle. Most times the tires are chain tires. It has a cannon um, point where it can shoot itself, but it can also house other weapons. It's like a battleship. The battleships of the U.S. Army have landing pads. Planes can take off from them and land. So they can carry other weapons. That's what it means. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Let me give you another name for strong tower. It's a fortress or it's an armory. The righteous runs into it and is safe not just by location but because of that which is available in it. So it is a signet of offense. We deploy the name. Something shows up. And I scream the name of Jesus. Ah, My introduction to warfare was early. I started fighting at age five. On my fifth birthday was my first day. Me, I fought back. But I've been under attack since like three. I was not stealing. I did not. They didn't raise us to abuse people. As a matter of fact, we lived in a missionary environment, what you call Bowen now. So all of our parents were missionary doctors. Most of the people in our area were Americans. So there was not much juju that was flying around. But we're still under intense warfare. For me, maybe the devil saw something. I was born here. And dad got a scholarship to go to the UK. I think we left when I was maybe a few weeks old. But it was me that allowed them to come back. He said on my first year birthday, I was so sick, he knew this boy was going to die. Call the ambulance. My son is sick. The closest hospital was four kilometers away and it was in the snow. And then he said, for once, the ambulance driver said, are you British? And he said, no, I'm a Nigerian doctor. 
I stood in the University of London and the ambulance driver said till morning. So he said he bore me on his shoulders. My bond with my dad is strong. He bore me on his shoulders and cried down the road for four kilometers in the snow. This boy must not die. This, I don't know, maybe he said some things to God that night. This boy must not die. He said, May I got well? He told my mom, I brought three children here. I will bury any one of them. Let's go back home. And then we came home, and me, I started fighting. But the name is potent. We learned the dynamics of the name by mentioning it. But like I shared in that message, that name can become a location where you are not just mentioning it, you deploy your rights of residence. Because I am in the name. I cannot be touched in his name. I told us many, about three years ago, I said names are symbolic of authority and character so when you attack a man who comes in the name the character of the name begins to fight the submission that that person has to that name begins to fight it's a strong power but it only houses the righteous that's one of the weaknesses of that weapon it only houses the righteous. So the prerequisite for deploying this weapon is righteousness. A man must have gained right standing by God. And it's not essentially by works. I keep saying that thing to us that we are not saved because we labored for our salvation. That you are behaving well. You are not lying. You are not cheating. It's not the reason why you are saved. I still share that on social media this afternoon. We were saved by the gift of God. Jesus labored, but we become irresponsible people if we take that grace in vain. You will, your life will be, I was going to share that before, I just skipped it. That, the, I think I shared that in um, Daniel. That in our work with God, there are three dimensions of maturity, basically. And there are three dimensions of perfection. When you gave your life to Christ, positionally, there were certain things. You were saved. He calls on the name of the Lord. He saved. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But that is positional. Jesus has done it. So, Paul can want to write to the Corinthian church a church that is bedeviled by all kinds of sins and he said I write unto you the saints that are sanctified and then you are wondering these guys that Paul is telling verse 8 flee fornication is a sanctified saint supposed to have issues with fornication but what he did was a statement of their positional state for it has pleased the father that all the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in him, and ye are complete in him. Some people say, oh, we don't need to grow again. We have it all. It's positional. There is an ultimate end in God for anybody who ever gets saved, which is your ultimate perfection. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 brings that to us. For those that he has foreknown, he has predestinated, he has set for them an end in himself, and they be conformed to the image of the Son. So you don't know about the process, but because God by ordination knows the end of the process, he's just looking at you. And you are struggling to pray today. You pray for two days, and after another 30 days, you pray. You are troubled. The brethren are troubled, but God knows the end already. So he can relate to you from the end. He knows ultimately based on one, two, three, four coordinates that I have. This is his end. That's your ultimate. But your Christian life will be a disaster if the experiential dimension is missing. And that experiential dimension is a 
partnership with the Spirit of God. He begins to work in you, not just so that you can become, but so that you can conform. He's tweaking your words. He's tweaking your desires. He's tweaking your, your cravings to the end that you can appear at the end as what God ordained you to be. So, you are prayerless now. We are not saying you are not saved. But there is a standard and a man must yield himself to the workings of the spirit so that he can match the template. When we were in school, I want to do program. At that time, everybody has money now. We just buy, there's one green material. I don't know if you know that material. Some people still use it. One green, shiny material. And then the art guys will just cut, we used to call it stencil. We just cut Baptist Student Fellowship presents. It's the way we cut so that the letters to enter themselves. And then we, we God forgive people, shall. They just run into the host, his church work and grab the edge of somebody's phone and pull it off. And then you begin to dab it. You have a template. You know when you put the first tab, if you take it off at that time, maybe out of the B self, it's just the, the, the whole part of it all. You have to keep tapping, keep tapping. And then at the end, when you look at your stencil, and you look at the image that's formed, you see a perfect formation. That's what the Holy Ghost is doing. A man keeps yielding himself to the Holy Spirit every day, and he keeps tweaking your life. That's where the process comes. So Paul did not say in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. He did not say, walk for your salvation with fear and trembling. He says, walk out your salvation. We know it's there. But it must be given expression. Don't say you are saved, but you look like a non-believer. What's the essence of claiming believer? If your life is not like them, if indeed it was an exchange life you have, conform, 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 conform. I helped answer some people because I know now that some people basically go online, pick my messages to critique it. I know. So when they hear this one, I've given them, maybe it's not for you. That answer was for them. That's what God told them. Say, give them that answer. That's what I could do now. I prophesied that thing two months ago. Uh, very soon. This junk online, they will run out of sermons. They have. They have. Because there are doors of inspiration that can be locked. So what they are doing now is that when you preach, they take what you preach. And then it becomes their, their project supervisors now. They now critique it and bring something out to say, That one is not for you. That one is for them. But in case you still need to know that too, there is a positional position or a positional perfection that Jesus brings because of his work on the cross. There is an ultimate one because of your coordination in God. And then there is an experiential one which is but the Holy Spirit, the three parts of the tripartite nature of God participate in the workings in your life. That's the way it is. So, so that's weapon three. Now, when I speak of the fourth one, it's another one that we love to use, which is the word of God. When I say the word of God, the word of God is not just the verses of scripture. I want you to hear me carefully now so that I will not be quoted wrongly. Your Bible is the word of God. But some of you in warfare will have had experiences when you quoted scriptures and it bounced anybody. Uh, you, okay, we don't have too many people have been fighting. You will start fighting after this thing. Don't worry. 
We will not ask you to fight. Fight will come. Yes. Because what God is going to help us to do is to make your, is to regulate your mind into a territorial dimension. And as you begin to stress for territories, you will be committing trespass, not as per sin. So. Trespass means, basically means to enter into a region that has not been assigned to you based on the laws of the land. So God will begin to handle out territories to men. And as you try to enter the territory, casually, warfare will just break out. They will not put beware of dog there. But when you step, you see a Rottweiler and an Ossetian, or the two breeds combine the one. I one dog that used to be in Oyo one time. It was one of large that owned it. It was three, it was a gradual cross breeding to form a monster. Rottweilers are short and long. Their teeth is so strong. Once the muscles of the teeth lock into anything, you need to inject the gum to release. So if he catches a man, he will hold him till they release the gum. You can't force the teeth open. I think the first crossbreed was with an ossetian. So the dog is long and is tall. The teeth come like the teeth of the Rottweiler, the ears, and finally they crossbreeded with a bulldog. So the ears are big. Once you enter, or you're, you see the man's filling stations, his friends, his sons, and my friends in school. When that dog is walking, if you have a baby, just take your baby in. If the head of the, is as big as the head of a bulldog, so it's more like a, a dog lion walking. Is you know. Bulldogs drew when they walk. So that's how it's going on the road. The tail is the tail of Alossation. It's brown and black. The ears are the ears. It was a monster. And that's what the enemy creates. Partner fellowship of the princes of hell. And then you think you have mastered uh, Iru and Alossation. Why you see the head? You know that the name of this dog is Mana. You know the meaning of manna? What is this? That's the name of the dog. So you will know. So warfare will come. But when you come against that kind of situation, and all you do is, you know, in my Bible, my Bible says, man, most of us don't even know enough of the Bible. To know what is appropriate. Say, you cannot stop me. My God shall supply all my needs. In this matter. Oh, ah, Jesus wept. No, no. Now, what am I sharing? Am I, are, they, are those verses alien to scriptures? So if I come to tell you that the word of God. That's what the Bible says. He said it is quick and alive. Sharper than any two edged sword. Why did you quote Jesus wept and it didn't work? Because you need to clearly define what is the word of God. If not, the whole theory that the word of God is a warfare tool is, is a fallacy. If I cannot just say Genesis 1.1 the way she got near, okay, sorry, that's John 1 1, Mufe quote. Near the Tekosheni or Owa. And then um, there's this guy, in, I think he's in Glory Hope, I don't know where. Uh, one Ori of Williams guy. He's, he's in the bottom. The demon in his films we help you complete. Or Rossi Wap, we are long. So I began to ask God because of my disappointments, which is one way to learn. Apostle Alme said to us one time, he said, God really speaks to people. Most times he answers. So a man must have the heart of a seeker 
to always inquire. And David inquired of the Lord. And this king inquired of the Lord. Many times you don't ask questions. So that nothing comes. God is not speaking to me. Your questions show God that you are interested. So I said, Lord, why do I quote scriptures? And it looks as if they just shake their body and then the warfare continues. So the Lord said to me, he said, in this warfare, God's word is the communication of his present position. There is that which God is saying right now. There is a revelation of his dimension right now. That's why one, you must be very versatile with scriptures. That's why we're bringing out this weapon so that men can engage them by practice. You understand the deployment of the name of Jesus. You understand the operations of faith. You understand the operations of the love of God. You understand the word to a point that your word bank is heavy. I've shared with people what they taught us in Sunday, in Sunday school, children's Sunday school, was to memorize scriptures. You can't know too much of scriptures by memory. Your brain has limits as per cramming the Bible. Those who know the Bible so well are not crammers. They fed their fellowship with it so much. Haven't you watched certain films that before the guy talks, you know what he will say? My most watched film of all time is one Oriofel Williams film like that. When some people stole church money to build them. You said, who has seen the film? Stole church money to build and then the witches of the land attacked them. You said, Judas something. The gospel of Judas. If I sit with you with that movie, I will literally give you word for word what Ahabali said. Word for sometimes I'm just bored in the house and I will even work from the beginning again. It's just that I think it's Anu that brought that thing. It's just that end part, the abalis, and then when the man was causing them by constant interaction. My dad has been asking to come, my biological father, a minister one evening. You'll be shocked. Once I hook and I'm trying to look for a reference. I just call him, maybe on his table. I'm with a patient. Give me two minutes. Okay, hello. He calls me Papa. Kini, what was that question? I'm looking for this verse. He may not know the verse in the beginning. Just say, okay, that portion, First Corinthians, that's in First Corinthians. You will break First Corinthians down instantly. And Paul spoke about, spoke about, okay, so it should be between First Corinthians 4 and 5. Then he picks for, it's not with a Bible. Then he picks 1 Corinthians 4 and 5 and said, 4, 7 verses. So it should be between verse um, 7 and 9. Of first, okay, so he will now go into the reference and say, okay, so 7 says, 8 says, your verse is verse 9. And I'm wondering, he doesn't miss. But it's not cramming. It's by interaction. We don't study as such. We don't study as such. There are few men who are studious as regards scriptures. You study your book so that you can pass. Your jottings, but your jottings are only jottings from the sermon in church. How many of us have personal Bible study books? Jotters. How many people here? Pa personal. That as you jot your academics, you jot from there too. You must have. Devotion is not, is not routine. Just like you don't want to fail exams, they understand that God gave his counsel so that you can go through life like a missile. You must have notes that you write. That's what you meditate upon. These things, like Paul said. And then you give yourself totally to them. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon them day and night. Some people's devotion is only in the morning. You know what meditation is? It's not reading. It's equal to, in a Greek, there's a process that ruminant animals have. What do they call it? Regurgitation. 
So you are running out of your house in the morning and you grab the word and you dump it into your heart in a hurry. When you now are walking on the road, you now regurgitate the words back. That's meditation. And then you now begin to ponder them one after the other, one after the other. If you do that consistently, those verses will sink. That's how to know the word. It's hard work. It's hard work. When God loves a man enough, you want to sleep. He first takes away your sleep. You want to watch film. Your system goes up. He now says, I have you. I want to have you. Now start studying. You will see verses that you have known all your life. Begin to release light. The courage of that light is what you now use to fight the enemy. So God's word is his current position. See how Jesus was deploying the word. It was accurate word for a particular situation. Not food supply when the enemy wants to break somebody's head. The word of God. I've said to us that some of these weapons are are deployed in more than one dimension. The word of God is a weapon of offense. You can use it to cut the enemy. You can deploy it against the enemy. But the word of God is also an anchor. The word of God is also a platform to stand on. It comes into very close relationship because your faith is actually based on what God's current position is. That's what sponsors faith. It's not general knowledge of scriptures. It's his current position. Lord, on this issue, what are you saying? Imagine that David's wife began to pray, none shall be barren. Will her womb be open? No! Because by divine programming, her reward for that activity shot children against her eternally. So there must be discernment. I've said to us, prayer is not a release of man's will. It's a reception of divine will. First, and then you now release back to God that which he has said. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have received those ones. So as a result of that which we have received, we now tell you, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Because we know in the will we receive, there is a provision for daily bread. The word of God. Okay, let me rush now. Five. Five is also, come, also comes like a virtue, but it's a weapon. And I know it's not commonly shared, but I call it resistance. So you say, now how does that become a weapon? Resistance is a, as a weapon is a product of a spirit furnishing called strength. It's actually the might of God. But what it operates as in warfare is the ability to resist. The word of God comes to us. It says resist the enemy. It means this kind of enemy does not understand the language of the name of Jesus. This kind of enemy does not understand tongues. The only thing you can use to overcome this one is just to hold your ground. Resist the enemy and he will flee away from you. It's simple. Don't cry. Don't shout. Don't roll on the ground. Just stand. There are times in warfare that you are not gaining ground. And you must understand that life is not determined to always be progressing. Sometimes you have to take a stand in God to maintain that which you have gained. Loud tech. So someone says, Lord, we speak into the next 10 years of loud tech that there will be no strike. It's possible. But there are few men who have the ability to legislate 10 years. You know what that means? It means whatever operation 
that will happen to create a strike. I have suspended for the next 10 years. You need, you need statue. If you look at the life of Jesus, his prophecy was in stages. Was it, Cap, was it Capernaum? There was a town he walked into. There was a particular town he walked into and began to prophesy over that region. When he was speaking about you know, a prophet coming into his town and he tried to do miracles. And then he went from that level when he stood on the Mount of Olives, he spoke over a nation. Ah, if you had known your time of visitation. But when he came to Matthew chapter 24, he spoke into the ages. What shall be the signs? What are the things to tell us that you are coming? And then he began back to speak nation against nation. You know. Like that, like what I was sharing when we were in Eden, uh, talking about, um, he says, woe unto those who are with child. Uh, what do you think he was speaking about? He's speaking about our days. I, shine, I said, I said what, what, what I would have said if I transcribed it was woe unto the pastors who raise children. And who gives suck to babies in those days? Let him who is on the rooftop. Do you think those were direct statements? They were allegorical. It was, it was sounding like a poet. Not come down to his house to come and pick anything. Let them flee to the mountains. They were not just direct statements, but at that point it was prophesying to the ages. So Enoch stood upon the earth five generations from Genesis and then he speaks concerning the millennial reign. I see the Lord coming with ten thousands of his angels. Who does that? His capacity to travel that far. Because at that level, the prophetic is not wishful thinking. It is declaration because you have experienced the spirit reality. It's kind. So you may not be able to speak over the next 10 years to stop a strike. But if the strike breaks and school resumes, you can hold your ground. Lord, school remains open. You know, it's easier than 10 years. We know we have gained this ground, so we keep it open. It is a position in the spirit where men become a wall. You know, it's scriptural. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 18 to 19, God says, this day I make you a, a brazen wall, a brazen pillar, a walled city. He's making a man. It means you are impenetrable. When you line up such men, the enemy can't penetrate. I know the Holy Ghost is allowing me to share this because as we come from one city to another, God is making us to know that the enemy has gained a lot of ground and God is just trying to be, or God is building in this season a last line of defense when Reverend Gideon was ministering on Friday night he aired a view Friday morning he aired a view that had always been my fear he said my labors are not for me my labors are for my children because if we continue this way what they will hear as the gospel will be perverted if ever they hear one. The godlessness is much and what you call the church now does not have the capacity to stop it. Instead of stopping it because of the lack of men who fight by resistance, the enemy has corrupted what we call the church now. The church has embraced it. You say persistence, where's what? resistance. Certain men stood but because the enemy persisted the enemy has penetrated. People preach now on behalf of the enemy. People sing now on behalf of the enemy. There are ushers who usher people into church on behalf of the enemy. The activities that you see on the street that are more, that are evil, that are more perpetrated in, the, in what you call the church now than the street. And he's driving a lot of truth seekers to begin to get disappointed in what the church is. So we may have children who are not willing to gather with anybody again. Say, trust me and my God in my house. 
But God did not create us, even as the church to exist as one. It's a spiritual committee, a community. It's a governing system. A system is not one entity. But people are getting tired. I'll share with my friend from Jika, the one I said connected me with Apostle. He came for the meeting too. And he was sharing with me on Friday night about the church he attends there. And let's not name the church. But the guy said, bro, I'm tired. Unfortunately, this, that looks like the only good place to go to. But that place too, the supply of ministry there is terrible. He said, leave what? These guys don't know God. There's, he, he said what I said in a day. He said, there's no system currently in that our church to raise men. Nothing. People are just coming to fellowship. And it looks as if people are, that's a fellowship. People are coming to socialize. And he says, there's no, that's the only place to go in our area as church. So if he marries there, he's planning to, and gives birth to children there, Someone from that system will come and christen his son. His son will go to Bible school or Sunday school or, or fellowship, house fellowship in that system. That's why God is raising a last stand of defense, an army of truth. That if it is not God with love to the end that men can be recovered, you will take a stand. I've shared with us that when it comes to doctrinal issues, our stand is not good or bad. Our stand is accurate. It's accuracy. That's what the stand is. There is a template if it is not matching, even if it looks good, it is not acceptable. We throw it out. But that's something we must do. Our generation must do against the enemy. It's a flood. It was one of the words God gave me in Makoti. Because as they began to talk, my heart started cutting too. At how enormous the enemy had gone. We were sleeping all these years. Sitting under some things and thinking that was all. The enemy was building systems. Now you see men who have emerged because their eyes have been opened and the men are trying to build systems. Do you think that people can fashion doctrine in three months? Most of the error we are seeing online now started in about the last six months. But do you think that's when it started? I heard that Al-Qaeda had been underground for 11 years. Actually, the, the September 11 attacks were, took 10 years to plan. One attack. People infiltrated the security system. People went to watch. What do they do in the airlines? How can we escape being caught? Where do we plant the bombs? What's the security of these buildings? While men were sleeping, attacks were going on. Planning, planning. They weakened the quality of prayer that we pray. They weakened the quality of word. Now they are weakening doctrines. So what, what, what remains? They've touched our dressing long ago. I'm sharing this thing so that our eyes can be open. I may have to close on this. That some people have to build a trust God to deploy a wall against the enemy and say beyond here you cannot come. I can't remember the minister from the north who was sharing that his son went to school. It was a British school because he didn't like what they were doing in most of the schools. Okay, this school they even teach you well. And in their book, I'm sure you read, I am a boy, I am a girl, right? He said in the book, they bought the book and he told his wife, let's just check. And in the book, he saw that I am gay for children. He said he told his wife, this is trouble. So they changed the school. But they've gone that one day the student, the boy will ask, auntie, what is gay? And then, while we are sleep, some of those have, I go to preach in schools here. Even to, I was still in a school. I think last week, right? And I was still ministering to kindergarten students. They are very receptive to the gospel. 
kindergarten, KG1, KG2, children that you tell them as I pray, when I say in Jesus' name, you say amen. I'm in trouble. The prayer is so slow. Father, amen. We, you want to say we thank, we, once someone says A, everybody goes A. So your prayer is so staggered. But while we look at those children, and I love praying for them, because what I do in prayer is to program their lives. Before the enemy gets to this one, Jesus, you will reveal yourself to them. None of these ones will become an instrument of darkness. Not, no, no, not, not, nothing of the junk outside can penetrate these ones. We hide these ones in advance in your name because that's our hope. Because while, while not, I was in Nosri 2 one time and I said, how many of you prayed your house this morning? Maybe two or three in a class of like 40. Their parents just ran off to work but the children may go to school and see I am gay. The enemy has gotten so low but we don't know. We don't know. I shared with a friend of mine abroad sometimes and he was telling me, you know, the way I talk many times, people think I'm married. I talk about my children and all that. And he said, be careful about cartoons. Because there is a sinister move even in the cartoon realm. Most of the cartoons we are having now are spiritual images of demonic entities so your child watches the cartoon he dances around the cartoon when that spirit comes to block him when he's sleeping would he run you won't even know so they brought them into the visible realm and created attraction so that when the children block them spiritually they, they can easily relate but while the parent is at home and is trying to cook and the child is disturbing him, he just put, put sit at Cartoon Network. Sit down there, be watching. And they've infiltrated us. It's deep. It's deep. It's deep. That, that, that kingdom is so organized. We are still doing doctrinal battles now. After a while, you just see another thing come. And because we have raised babies who can be easily tossed. The ones who think they are the ones trying to correct now. When they see that they are not winning again, another one will have come. Waves upon waves of error. God needs a last line of defense. Men of resistance. Say, beyond here, devil, you will not come. I want to speak to the ladies here. Men are also responsible, Mr. Tao. But I want to speak to the ladies. I learned that many years ago from God's servant, um, Archbishop Duncan Williams, that God's forays, entry points, that's what I mean, into the earth realm, many times come by the ministry of women. So a woman is a gate in the spirit. Genesis chapter 6. The Bible says a time came when the sons of God, they looked upon the daughters of men and they liked them. The Bible said they, so they came into them and then they began to give back to these giants. These Nephilim spirits invaded the earth. I do not have time by study to share with you the things that these spirits brought. But when I walk on the road, based on the knowledge I have, I see the things that those spirits imported. Um, there are writings that have the names of those who led that rebellion, the 13 of them, and the supplies they brought, technological supplies, and some other things. God help our sisters. I won't say more than that. Uh, I know it's not, uh, did you read with us? You read with him to a point, have you? The Lamy, they read with us. There's one book we're reading like that. Now, this is what I'm saying. What if those daughters of men mounted the resistance? What if when the sons of God looked upon them, 
What if they had become women of stature and said no penetration into our realm? They will have saved us a lot. Because in my little study of demonology, those Nephilims are worse than those that fell with Satan. You know they are not Satan's rebellion. The ones that came in the rebellion of Satan did not exchange their bodies. They still come as um, they, if he appears to you, you still appear in his demonic body. But the Nephilims are the are their hardest to detect because the Bible said they left their former estate. So they are bodiless entities. They need human bodies to operate. And the flood of Noah did not eliminate them. It took away those, those giant bodies. But the spirits are still here. They control the showbiz. They operate to make gods out of men. That's all they are doing. So one small musician comes out of Oshu State there. A state where they don't pay salaries. And then he, he comes up with a song that has no meaning sells a few copies, goes to the US, signs a contract, comes back to Nigeria, and then he becomes global, and everybody dresses like him. I've gone to a church that has seen someone sack his trousers like him, was the praise and worship leader. Suit, low wall. But his trouser was here. With suit, we're seeing his boxers. They've influenced everything. become God. When Michael Jackson was alive, I watched a, 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 a concert. He removed his suit. You know, he lost buttons. And threw his suit. People pulled that suit like they were sharing Jesus' clothes. They tore it in mid-air. I heard that people got close to him and fainted. Just because of the reality that, what? This is Michael Jackson. I hear Beyonce has that effect too. They come so close to her and just pass out. Wow. They've made gods out of men. They've defined our civilization. Go on campus. You are students now. Go on campus. All kinds of things have been shipped into the earth because patterns have been raised. But God needs a people. Who will mount this last God? It will be Jesus all the way. That's what I want to do in the social media. We want a on data place. We are not preaching revs. Uh -uh. We'll just choke them with Jesus. Do you know? Do you know? Now I, now I see where there are certain posts that I share that you can, that I post that you can share. There are certain that you cannot share. Now, we've been worrying for some time this setting. I got my answer in Makodi that it's a Facebook programming. There is a programming currently on Facebook that can scan your content and can limit the number of people who see it or who can share it. So they, see, they know now, at least this morning, I had statistics that in four days, for whatever I posted, I have five, about 593 likes for everything I posted. It means they are taking statistics, which also means they could also get to know what my contents are like. And then if they feel that it's something that is against them, they can limit my page. And then my access is reduced. So I get calls we want to share and we can't share. It was said in that meeting that recently, internationally, if you defame the name of Jesus, you say something evil about the name of Jesus, it's no longer a crime. They've removed his name out of the list of things you can defame and then you commit a crime. There are some channels on DSTV that you can't even see. Once somebody says God, it goes silent. If it's subtitled, anywhere there's God, is there's space. Even on DSTV. 
So they are undoing us. It means our children may watch films without God in them. That our children may watch films without Jesus in them. We need to build a line. So what we are raising as warriors is not just prayer men. It's men who will take a responsibility to infiltrate these systems. That's what this weapon is about. That you are in an office and you can build a last line of defense for the kingdom. That on your campus you can say, yeah, everybody can do what they want, but from here, if it's not God, it does not pass. The decay is deep. I will go to the last one. I think that's six for me, Shay. Five. No, I can't. Ah, no. Let me just stay at five. Let me just stay at five. Next week out, just go straight into it. I've spoken so much on this last one. Because to be able to, to, to deploy this weapon, you need to possess much of the others. You need to possess many of the others. The men who can build that last line of defense must be men who live in the name. Must be men who are accurate with God's present position, which is his, the communication of his word. There will be men of faith. There will be men of faith. I take out time every week to labor over my children. Because I know that they will be born into a world where corruption already is. But in advance, Lord, you will keep them from the evil one. I pick my siblings once in a while. I know that they are in Lagos. And I know what's happening in Lagos. I know what church in Lagos is. Church in Lagos will answer in heaven. Because they brought a bad template to the body of Christ. It was the entry point of the Babylonian system into the church. So I know that they may not have anywhere to go, but churches that are like that. But I know that even where in scriptures, even where the seat of Satan is, there are men who will still keep the faith. So I take out time to labor over their lives. Lord, don't stop revealing yourself to them. You will keep them even in that place. You keep building a line. If you can walk into the room of your neighbor and collect something from them because you have a need, you all call the responsibility to build a wall on their behalf. The enemy must not get this one before Jesus gets them. That's what God wants to do. So we are not laboring so that we can be witch killers or wizard killers. We are laboring because by the great commission, we have a responsibility to advance the kingdom. Manavara <laughs> Keke keke kama pano soteri la balala basi kete. Ekala proto ne katosha. We are equipped with weapons to the end that God can colonize the earth. Entertainment needs to be ceased. Sports needs to be ceased. Hallelujah. Rise up to pray. Go rise up to go rise up to pray. Just give me a minute. When I say sports, when I say sports, recently, recently, a shake from the one of the shakes or the top guys in United Arab Emirates sent a a bill to the governing council of FIFA. FIFA is the football team. Now, when some of us were praying that um, who was the former FIFA president? Blatter should go. We felt Bin Haman, that's that um, the one from the Middle East, was supposed to be. The, now we are beginning to see what the agenda was. 
You know, a player like Kaka in his days scores a goal, and what does he do? Even Neymar does it. He they wear an undershirt and then they have names on it. Even Neymar has a headband. And some people don't do that. All they do is they point to us up or they just do a cross sign. The easiest way they do the cross is hands up and hands out. The bill was that everything that has to do with all those kind of showings must be cancelled. It now it becomes a penalizable offense. Real Madrid on their logo they have a cross the company sponsoring them has told them to take the cross off it is that bad or sponsorship ends is that deep so why we think that Sunday morning is celebrate some of us even call it celebration service where we dance over victories that victories in battles that we did not engage in the enemy is infiltrating systems you know nature of us vacuum that jesse will have another sign and because you are a fan you will wear they are taking us out they are taking us out but that's why the warrior generation is there a brother was sharing in Makodi about a scholarship he would have had and he said his crime was because he was a Christian. He was a first class student. He made a saw he was a Christian from his state. They said, no, you will not. And so he found himself doing his master's in Benin State University. But it was still a setup because that was how he got into RCA. Because he was a Christian. They are moving us out of positions and we are shouting. We are dancing, we are dancing, we are dancing. When will that generation arise? He said, I urge you earnestly to contend for the faith. Our gospel is too cheap. It's not worth fighting for. Gideon you know, Oduma said during this last meeting, he said, if, if what some people are teaching as the gospel is the gospel, then it's not, it's not worth being part of. This is our cry. We're not trying to rock people's boats. But to bring the truth. The truth is not words. It's a personality. That's the oath I made with him this evening. I said, Lord, make me invisible. Be the only one that is seen. Can we stand tonight? I want men to... So speak to God that this last line of defense will be built by you. I want you to make a demand for funny things in the spirit. That which we have received is worth fighting to keep. God, that which you have received, the revelator said that no one takes your crown. It is a demand for custodians in the spirit. I feel the anointing so strong on me, so I know we're on point. It is a demand for custodians, keepers, keepers, keepers. Barada Babo Sakatala Libala Hete. Ekela Kramba Ratoshka Ladanadanaba. Ataletana da Sandra Brata Tabalila Naba Sete. Tete Kokoko Kalagadabosa. Sekete mana parana lanteta, ala nateta, elara kabarada daskala diatatesh. Tonton taba turamas taba lantesh. Santa lata balata lata balata liata, rakata lata tabarata, rekete koko tosha, eteka kata la baras. We build the wall in partnership with the spirit. Yeah. 
are there women here tonight who will mount God who will mount God and say no to the infiltration of the enemy are there warriors here tonight like Shama who will God fields alone my heart sings so territory to take I want us to start there you know that by by election you are de- no, I'm not saying you think there have been confirmations that you are the custodian of your home I want you to come up quickly I'm not going to spend time I'm just going to make contact with you that our energies in the spirit are matched up together now i want you to understand this what i mean is that you know that if the enemy will penetrate that home you will be the gate if the enemy will not be able to have access it is you that god will depend on oh, okay so i have nobody to play i need you to play and i need people to sing i'll i'll, I'll be with you shortly i want you to lift up your hands where you are and ask for that grace there is a divine supply that maintains that. Deda kana ta 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 ta. Lega to kwa ka ta para ka to ka ta ta ke ka to ta. Lega ti ka ka ta ta ka pa. There is a supply of weapons for that trade. Raka da ba ya da dash. Alaga dash. My heart sinks. My heart sinks. My heart sinks. Yes, 
We break those hogs. We break those hogs. We break those hogs. Ah, uh, it will lift your head and it will lift for every other one. There is a, I see a plane above and his hands are drawing you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we declare by faith that territory take it. That territory take it. That territory take it. That territory take it. The comments of a gatekeeper, access to our access to our ah, ah, No weapon from the gates you shall prosper. No weapon from the gates you shall prosper. Tonight, 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 every arrow in your direction will not land. Spirit,
Multiplication of capacity, capacity, kada da ya da 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 da, lika da barash, rada da ba ba da 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 da. We release a line of defense, a line of defense, a line of defense. No more. We say to the enemy beyond here, you shall not come. In the name of Jesus. She can't come She can't come back. She can't Simele parina toriata na kagaste ezaka kata mele pra etons ekwak al alto me kota dash I hear the spirit quicken Nahum chapter one verse nine into my heart. The Bible says, "What is this thing that you plan against the Lord?" It shall all tally destroy, for affliction shall not rise a second time. Tonight, Father, we lift up a voice in the throne room on the behalf of these ones. That if there is a massive release of the supplies of the Spirit, the Bible says, "Put on the whole arm of God." That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. There is a funny thing that makes men to stand, and we make that demand tonight. Now, as custodians in their families, ah, the force of heaven will be the strength of their utterances. The force of heaven will be the strength of their utterances. The force of heaven. I ask for revelations into that which is God's verdict over every family. The counsels of the elderly all are revealed and they are enforced. As I lay my hands on them briefly tonight, let there be deposits. Let there be deposits. Let construction works break out tonight. Ata kwapa teka keka toma na boseka i keka kera kata taka porakata ya shakata e kaka balalwa sataba perakata man te kebeke to e balakuka balasankata ya 
let the construction works that furnish men for warfare be laid upon them in the name of Jesus for want of time I will just touch you but your oppression will be present and the Lord will begin to quicken you you begin to quicken you to pray you begin to quicken you to labor and you will see turnarounds in their seasons Jesus 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 the cause paranata Jesus Ah Madaya Tonasa Jesus 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 Ya patala la na bahasa Ya palaka parada payaleta Jesus Jesus Let the be released Jesus, 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 power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, let the furnishings be supplied. Utterances at the force of God, at the force of God, at the force of God. Parana da ita, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, furnishings of a warrior of a warrior of a warrior we ask for a programming that no battle will be lost We thank you. Shaka a garment, a garment, a garment, a garment. Cloth, 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 cloth. Repara tapa, the coco bata tapa. The pia kata ba. Jesus. My Lord, see. Oh. Eti pene te pene te rete ke ma ata ba. Esata tapa la para bata la bia shaka. Jesus, Jesus, we ask 
We ask for a generation. And another to certainly get the We make a demand for that which will serve a generation. Oh, 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 oh,
Impossible and the gates into that realm have been opened to you. When you speak, when you speak, systems will be affected. That which is given you is what you can pass on, is what you can pass on. What I see is, is, is a baiting like release. You will operate, but you will also pass. Rest, rest, rest. Teso seme sana tisa tata. Ela kitunza bahas kato te mahanti kiso shuta. Shona te koma sopre atasata. Fela ke koso ze eshe to kaza asopre atasano kati bia sheta. Mendo so asopa toke meda kia konto razana masapra. A polar a cacatus. You were my teeth, Lord. 
There is a impartation of the nature you that I sing of. Might, 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 might. In the name of Jesus. E esoma eslama shabaha. Moda erosa esete kekema. Things will suddenly get better. It will suddenly get better because you God is releasing. It says furnishing of strength, but the outflow is the might of God. Take it in the name of Jesus. La gamana bayava tamashibede. Torone kuko esine kete neseba. A gatekeeper's unction. A gatekeeper's unction. There is a position in the spirit that. Okay, let me put it this way. There is a demand for a posture in the spirit. You access is knowledge. Yes, there is a need for much prayer, but your access is knowledge. That which you know is what will position you. What he lays upon you tonight is not for a nuclear family, it's for a clan, for an extended family. That there are certain operations that will stop because you showed up. In that posture, battles cannot be lost.